You are not audible, sir. Oh, now it's working. Are you hearing me? Uh, sorry. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, sorry, uh, you are not audible, sir. Kindly check. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm audible. Is it? Yeah, now you are audible. Now you are audible. Yes. Thank you. Uh, fine, fine. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm again sorry, guys. I don't have any other word to say to all of you because. I think there are some challenges, you know, which is routine we used to do sometimes that some gadgets are behaving uh, like the initial implementation of blockchain. Yeah. I'm sorry once again. I'm sure I, I I'm sure this kind of thing normally lower the interest level, which I apologize. Uh, okay. Now let's look at the blockchain. Is it for every application, every industry? Now you have a question. Okay, I can apply, apply. Can I do the blockchain for every industry across the globe? Let's do five questions. Are there multiple parties in the ecosystem? Number one, that means more than one party. Second, we'll have to talk about is this establishing trust between all parties is an issue. That means the trust is an issue because I really want to only deal with the trusted part. Second, it is, is it critical to have a tamper-proof permanent record for transactions? There is an unalterable kind of thing. Are we securing ownership and management of finite resources? Like, you know, same land sold to multiple people, same car sold to multiple people. So, if there is a challenge like this. Does this ecosystem benefit from improved transparency? That means, do you need a complete transparency-driven system? I think that if you ask the question, I can say one by one, the blockchain is the answer. So why, how blockchains are answered? Let us look one by one. Blockchain get more secure with more parties in the network. That is what we have seen. That is what the question number one. Second, we said that blockchains improve trust between participants having multiple point of verification. We have seen that also. Blockchain create permanent record that cannot be edited and deleted, which we seen once the block is added in the chain. You cannot do things, right? Another one, if you really see that, you know, the core logic system designed to prevent double counting of an asset. That means once you do with the blockchain, the hash is there, there are algorithms is there to prevent, you know, the duplication. Definitely blockchain is helpful in this context. Blockchain transparent by design. Like we say, you know, some of the application after the GDPR come, you know, privacy by default. So trans blockchains are transparency by design, right? So that is what we need to look at. So if we have these five critical questions and the blockchain can be the, the suitable platform for you. Now, let's look at another blockchain you know, application. Almost if you really see, you can see that I don't have an exact count. I think three, five, three, five, you know, eight, here, almost 16, 14, you know, different industry are the vertical strategies in blockchain. Smart contract, which we saw that in a couple of examples, there is one more, you know, specific size on this. So it's a distributed ledger, enable coding of simple contract that will execute with a specified condition. There are many specific conditions in a contract. One could be a starting date, one could be a value, one could be other penalty class. And also, you know, there are various other, you know, the classes in the contract. So instead of you do manually, you can use this smart contract a platform. Sharing of economy, nothing but, you know, you do the kind of you know, fund transfer, you know, digital currency kind of a thing. Another one, we talk about crowdfunding. Nowadays, you see venture capitalists, you know, normally the big finance houses, holding company only does. But after this, you know, the crowdfunding, the concept has come, you know, many strategies. See. But the only thing in the blockchain, it almost, you know, ensures that, you know, the uniqueness, transparency, uh, or finite uh, uh, part of the ownership and all. 
the governments already i see you know couple of you know the american states started you know the governments you now using blockchain including birth certificate you know driving license passport kind of stuff supply chain it is one of the critical for every business from the source of procured one raw material purchase or many other packing material anything you purchase till the final product reach an end customer so you have various stakeholders we have various you know consortium various companies so definitely the supply chain which may be you know required and the blockchain technology so it will may be very very useful and five storages prediction market intellectual property that is very very key today you see you know most of the intellectual property rights has been misused violated copy so using that you know the unique feature of blockchain you will be able to better protect those intellectual property the internet of things definitely we really look the they are just talking about you know 25 to 35 billion iot device uh, in coming you know 2025 to 2030 so blockchain also is another thing which really see that the sensor uniqueness you know kind of a thing which can use the blockchain technology can be a very well go with iot the micro grid mostly they use for renewable energy using blockchain technology because again you have to go with the six i think one is the uh, in you know, finite ownership on the usage and all uh, very well you know some of the companies in us started using the especially the renewable energy they are using blockchain identity management is really you know very tough that is the most challenging one everyone sees because i think you may even see one of the slides or video just touching on this identity management blockchain now started implemented in many places yeah and uh, and and also again the connection last now uh, is sometime back i don't know it's off on chat am i not able again okay AML and KYC. AML and KYC. Uh, can anyone say hi to me? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Kindly go ahead. in case is you no know, boss the specifically in the stamp paper and all you really see that land raised in title is one of the biggest issue specifically you know avoiding the duplicate sale and also establishing the rightness of the ownership and stock trading which is something you know which is evolving i'm sure maybe you know nowadays you have to buy a stock you have to go through the intermediary ye you know they call brokers and agents maybe you know once the uh, blockchain technology evolves maybe you know you may directly by and shares with the in the what we call the middleman or agent or intermediary and another thing which we are just uh, expecting right and if you really see that you know the blockchain you know the is completely coupled and tied very very tightly coupled with the your financial driven transaction because if you go to organization mostly always you listen you know the account success fund audit control system and uh, you know check them check, checking mechanism cross checking double checking you know all that everything always you will see you know design the control system control effectiveness all that you know we really you are always here why always you are here because there is a money right so the blockchain you know the system by design itself you know you have the you know you have the Uh, uh, what do you call? You have, uh, you have the production, finance, shipping, insurance. All you know, very well connected with the the blockchain technology helps you to connect seamlessly, right? Now we are talking about smart contract. What is a smart contract? The computer protocol that facilitates, verify, or enforce the negotiation or performance of the contract. The key word here is. enforce the negotiation of performance of the contract so that is the key second it helps you to exchange money property 
right it tells you you know it it it, it helps you to you know uh, propose the you know property shares or anything value that transparent and conflict free that is the key and also another key is avoiding service of middleman Define the rules and penalty around agreement. Normally, what we do in the contract, there is a penalty clause, there is a performance clause, you no know, various clauses are there that we can do it now digitally. There are platform offers with the companies. Now, if you really look, this is a pictorial representation of that. Right. Now, we come to that uh, again. This is a blockchain application. I think again, I, I know this is something I can can I directly play the. Uh, Link. I'm just thinking. Uh, speaker, I put same as this one. I'm sure now you should be listening. So you heard about yeah, blockchain. I will not have an audio. You got on the you internet. You read audio. a few articles or watched a few videos to figure out how it works. And now that you understand that, you're still confused. How can this technology be used in the real world? Well, let's take a look at a few oh. examples. But before we do that, let's quickly recap what a blockchain is. In simple terms, it's a distributed database that everyone can get. So you heard about blockchain. You got on the internet, you read a few articles or watched a few videos to figure out how it works. And now that you understand that, you're still confused. How can this technology be used in the real world? Well, let's take a look at a few examples. But before we do that, let's quickly recap what a blockchain is. In simple terms, it's a distributed database that everyone can get a copy of. Every person with a copy can add new records to this database, but they cannot change any record that's already in there. This property makes blockchains great to record data in a transparent way because everyone gets to see what's in it. So how can it be used? Well, in this video, I'll give you nine examples. Let's start with the most obvious and most popular application of blockchains, and that is cryptocurrencies. When Bitcoin launched in 2008, it allowed people to directly transact with one another without having to trust third parties like banks. Since then, over 1600 different cryptocurrencies have been created. But let's look beyond cryptocurrencies. Let's look at how blockchain technology can be used in cars, for example. Ever heard of odometer fraud? By tampering with the odometer, someone can make a car appear to be newer and less worn out, resulting in customers paying more than what the car is actually worth. The government tries to counter this by collecting the mileage of cars when they get a safety inspection. inspection, but that's not enough. So instead, we could replace regular odometers with smart ones that are connected to the internet and frequently write the car's mileage to a blockchain. This would create a secure and digital certificate for each car. And because we use a blockchain, no one can tamper with the data and everyone can look up a vehicle's history. In fact, this is already being developed by Bosch's IoT lab and they are currently testing it on a fleet of 100 cars in Germany and Switzerland. So blockchains are great at keeping track of things over time. So besides odometers, you can also keep track of things like intellectual property or patents, or it can even function as a notary. See, a notary is someone who can confirm and verify signatures on a legal document. But we can just as well use a blockchain for that. The online website stamp.io allows you to add documents to the Bitcoin or Ethereum blockchain. Once added, you can always prove that you created a document at a certain point in time, much like a notary, although right now blockchains aren't on the same level as notaries in a legal perspective. Another interesting application is digital voting. Right now, voting happens either on paper or on special computers that are running proprietary software. Voting on paper costs a lot of money, and electronic voting has security issues. In recent years, we've even seen countries move away from digital voting and adopting paper again because they fear that electronic voting can be tampered with and influenced by hackers. But instead of paper, we could use blockchains to cast and store votes. Such a system would be very transparent as everyone could verify the voting count for themselves 
and it would make tampering with it very difficult. The Swiss company Agora is already working on such a system and it's going to be completely open source. But there are many challenges. First, you have to be able to identify voters without compromising their privacy. Secondly, if you allow people to vote with their own computers or phones, you have to take into account that those might be infected with malware designed to tamper with the voting process. And a final example, a system like this also has to be able to withstand denial of service attacks because that could render the whole thing unusable. Definitely a tough nut to crack, but if it becomes reality, it could make for a more transparent and practical voting system. Let's move to yet another example, the food industry. They could use blockchain technologies to track their food products from the moment they are harvested or made to when they end up in the hands of customers. See, every year almost half a million people die because of foodborne diseases. And that's partly because it takes too long to isolate the food that is causing harm. Blockchains could help us to create a digital certificate for each piece of food, proving where it came from and where it has been. So if a contamination is detected, we can trace it back to its roots and instantly notify other people who bought the same batch of the bad food. Walmart and IBM are currently working on such a system. It allowed them to trace the origin of a box of mangoes in just two seconds compared to days or even weeks with a traditional system. A system like this could be applied to other industries as well. We could use it to track regular products and battle counterfeit goods by allowing anyone to verify whether or not the product comes So, uh, you know, just now you've seen that the blockchain you know, application is now the last thing. Now, let me just, you know, show you something else. The blockchain. Uh, one second. And we'll just see the another example in the uh, what do you call it? In the supply chain context. You know? and this is another example which you are going to see in the, the supply chain. Uh, there, you know, they use IoT and blockchain. So, that, you know, it will be again a quick video. Let us just see that.
you know this is an you know i, I think some, most of you have the shared the link i think you know i'll be able to share all the video links what i use you know maybe at the end of the uh, presentation or you know otherwise uh, you know it will be given to the uh, what i call the you know the organizers you will get it but this uh, sharing link i have no problem i just share this video with you uh, yeah so uh, again you know i'm just assuming that you're all hearing me i'm just going ahead with the next uh, video uh, which is 11 blind 11 benefits of blockchain in retail so let us listen to the presentation i think this session mostly goes on different uh, video presentation and we will see uh, Hi everyone, welcome to our next tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about 11 benefits of blockchain in retail. So the most important benefit for retail is this transparency into the supply chain. So as it applies to all the members of the supply chain from the manufacturer, the distribution channel, to the retailer and to the end consumer. And you as a consumer will be able to get answers to the questions such as, where are these products and goods coming from? Who made them? How were they made? Did the manufacturer had any labor law violations? And as a company, you can improve public image by being proactive and transparency created into your supply chain. Number two benefit is counterfeit prevention. So according to the research done by Research and Markets in Global Brand Counterfeiting Report 2018, the amount of total counterfeiting globally has reached about $1.2 trillion in 2017 and is expected to reach $1.82 trillion by 2020. And it is also estimated the losses due to counterfeiting of high-end consumer goods such as clothing, textile, footwear, cosmetics, handbags, they're expected to reach about $98 billion. And the losses incurred by the luxury brands are expected to reach about $30.3 billion. And all these costs ends up getting transferred into the into the products and by the end of the day into you as a consumer. So by having blockchain and being preventing counterfeiting, you will be able to know the which product were originally being made by the brand. So you don't end up spending money buying a counterfeit product. And also companies such as the Real Real who sell secondhand products, it makes it easier for them to verify the history and of the particular product and you can also be very confident that the product you're buying from them if they're part of the blockchain is also uh, original and is not a counterfeit product so benefit number three is reduce product recall costs and also reduce illness and injuries so companies would be able to recognize which stock of product is causing any issues and easily identify them so since the blockchain is updated in real time parties on the network can identify the point where an unsafe product goes into the supply chain and this way increase efficiencies as truly affected goods and products would have to be recalled versus doing a more generalized call where they end up re recalling all the products number four is consumer in control of the data so blockchain puts consumers in the control of your data assets and cuts down the middleman it maximizes the value of the data for both the companies as well as the consumers. Benefit number five for blockchain in retail is to ensure product delivery. So this way you improve shipping experience for consumers, monitor item location throughout the shipping process with IoT tagging and manage the delivery in real time. Number six, and this is huge, cross border payments. So by using blockchain, retailers can bypass credit cards and high processing fees that come with it. And those savings can potentially be passed on to the consumers. Number seven is product warranties. So move product warranties from paper into the cloud via blockchain, keeping them up to date and easily transferable. So consumers will be able to maintain a virtual warranty wallet, saving retailers and manufacturers administrative work. So benefit eight for blockchain in retail is smart contracts. So blockchain enables the use of so smart, so-called smart contracts, which help ease the hassles associated with the collection and enforcement under traditional transaction structures. So the automatic transactions are triggered only when the conditions are met. So influencers can collect payments from brands for their work 
it makes it easy to manage refunds and of course automated insurance settlements and payouts so benefit number nine for blockchain is no hidden fees so forget about the fees and commission and as the system is decentralized there is absolutely no need to pay any intermediaries benefit number 10 of blockchain is the digital and in-store integrations so deliver seamless omni-channel interactions facilitated by decentralized encrypted database of consumer interactions and preferences accessible in real time so consumers will be able to transfer their online purchases and online experience link it with the in-store experience and there will be an omni-channel interactions that can be facilitated so it doesn't look like when a consumer goes into a physical store it's considered as consumer number a and when they're shopping online it's considered consumer number b and the companies cannot match who is who so this way you'll be able to is perceived as to the company as one consumer and giving you seamless omni-channel interactions so benefit number 11 is managing digital retail coupons so improve customer loyalty programs by issuing loyalty coupons on blockchain network securely and safely I think you know the, the question and answer session. I'll take that because you know uh, it is there. There are many industries which I because there are sessions you know by industry wise you know specified in the FTP. So definitely uh, you are going to have you know the sessions cover deep dive in certain industries, you know, education, healthcare, and that kind of stuff. I only cover those industries which is not you know generally part of the daily account. Yeah, and. Uh, I think you know the the uh, uh, you know, okay. I think okay. now let's look one unique thing because you know the agree you know, we are just talking about a lot of economy. So we just talked about the board of the economy where you will see you know your mango seller and exporter in the remote village of India he is reaching you know the other part of the world across the globe seamlessly, uh, which normally take another four minutes to do. I think I'm also I think the Time is also, I need to know how much more time I have. Let me just start this video. And uh, I'm sure you will be enjoying this video. A typical agricultural supply chain involves complex interconnected processes between various stakeholders, such as the producer, inspection and insurance companies, logistics and shipping agencies, banks, manufacturer and importer before it reaches a consumer sitting in another corner of the globe. However, in this long process, there are quite a few challenges. Importers find it difficult to track provenance to understand the place of origin and quality of the imported produce. As the produce moves between multiple stakeholders, the ownership or custodian information becomes difficult to trace. Centralized bodies, especially private agencies that certify crop produce, may not be trusted by international importers. Information flow between stakeholders is sequential, leading to potential delays in downstream decision-making. Overall, stakeholders lack transparency in this process. ...process and lose track of relevant transactions. So, how do we tackle these challenges? Introducing Infosys Blockchain. Any activity can be documented and stored in the distributed ledger only with consensus among all participating stakeholders, thus making the network more trustworthy than any individual entity. Untrusted stakeholders can transact amongst each other through smart contracts without the need for a centralized body. Every the blockchain network. 
Meanwhile, Mohan is busy making mango pulp to be delivered to Charles Becker. The pulp is inspected and certified as well. Mohan then issues an invoice to Charles. Charles tracks the provenance of the product entirely from where the mangoes were cultivated to the inspection and insurance details before accepting the invoice. Mohan then raises a shipment request with the shipping company. Once the bill of lading is uploaded by the shipping company, the smart contract between Mohan and Charles gets executed and Charles's bank initiates a payment to Mohan's bank. The transaction details are updated on the network. Thus, Charles sitting in Germany is able to remotely track the provenance of the mango pulp imported from India. Infosys Blockchain simplifies life for everyone in the supply chain. It ensures that all stakeholders gain transparency in every transaction. See, now, I, I'm sure you, know, you would have seen, uh, actually sometimes, I don't know how, uh, uh, yeah. And you would have seen, you know, how it helps seamlessly to the a mango farmer who's the remote engaging in the, the blockchain technology. It is not only the blockchain, you know, there are other technologies normally used to uh, complete this, you know, transaction end to end. Yeah. Now let's see the challenges. Is the blockchain so sweet? So far we loved it. Maybe you know I want to implement my organization. Maybe you may have a lot of thinking. Now let's look a few challenges and uh, let's see. You know. See, generally, uh, you know, there is uh, there are you know, a lot of blockchain companies. If you really look, you know, there are top blockchain providers. If you really see IBM, we have a lot of you know. The contracts and also Exchange, Deloitte, you know, they're all the uh, top four big consulting companies, Deloitte, ENY, KPMG, right? And also Infosys, which you have seen example. And also Wipro committed, you know, make enterprise adaptation. And also, you know, NDT data, Cognizant, you know, every, everyone, you know, really putting their effort to make, you know, a lot of effort into see that the, the transformation and adaptation of blockchain technology. And also, if you really look, uh, the next one, like I was telling you, some of the companies, like Ethereum is the company which created the first smart contract plan, plan. and also EOS, which is, you know, permission blockchain, which you would have seen one of the examples, and also Hyperledger, you would have seen in one of the examples, which is basically, the, you know, the distributed ledger, which keeps. And uh, Ripple also is focused on the financial industry, because the blockchain, technology, whatever required, you know, specifically for industry focus, which is financial. And you will see Stellar is another company which is financial oriented. And also R3, you know, you see somewhere permission blockchain kind of thing. That means, you know, you build consensus, you need to have the federated blockchain or it comes to the, uh, you know, what you call the other type of blockchain. So it's not public, right? Private blockchain. And Eco is another company, they are just doing advanced smart contracts. And Quorum is the company, it is just you see, you know, really distributed and smart contract platform, which you see now. Now itself, you see three more companies working on the smart contract and digital, uh, especially the distributed budget. And also another one, which is just you now working more and more on the Bitcoin kind of a stuff, which is Quorum. Right. Now, challenges. Tell me, is it very easy? Can I go ahead? Adaptation. If you really see, some of them you get surprised. Anyway, the worldwide project management body says, the research says, you know, almost if you really see, this is a statistic which I, you know, gone through a couple of years back. The worldwide out of 100% projects, it is only 28 to 30% of the project success. And uh, another 20 to 30 percent of the project, you know, is somewhere, you know, with overrun and all they completed. And the rest of the project, you know, there is no trace. That means the failures are huge. That is there for every industry and every technology. So blockchain is not exception into this case. First of all, if you really see many of the company yet to hear what is blockchain technology, the minute they get in order, they were so excited to implement it. Because they really don't understand exactly how the blockchain works. You know. And also, you know, some place the blockchain is still to go some more maturity. That is another one. And also there is a complex, you know, still, you know, success stories. We really see, you know, we have to really go through, you know, how many success stories 
even the whatever the example the video seen we really need to know how many such a stories in reality is done and also if you really see you know to blockchain some of the business model or business process you need to align and adapt towards the a technology platform that is also another change challenge because if you see it may threat for the stakeholders assume that you know uh, one shipping company i know i just i am also one of the stakeholder uh, because of the implement blockchain technology i am also one of the you know uh, we stakeholder investor where my business goes right as i am in a third party then i have a problem right that's another challenge in the this is our primary challenge the secondary challenge is if we have to go a little bit more some of the skill there is a clarity on how the technical architecture should be that is another challenge and uh, many enterprise they don't know really the what is the return of investment because many company if you go to you know whatever the technology go at the end you know it goes with all the cxo solution the minute you go to the finance gentleman he will say you know what is my return of investment they say i am putting one crore now when i am going to get it then if you go to the higher level of management they say what is the value proposition if you go to little more this side they said what is the key business model can you give objective can you give measurements so all this you know all challenges you know we have yet to get an answer right and also if you really see some of the federated blockchain we saw we saw a lot of you know consortium that means multiple partner multiple companies that is another thing we really need to have a lot of you know the management skills to manage that is another thing which we really need to look and also still you know if you really see like i was saying the privacy and security is only you know couple of uh, categories available one they are attacks and another they are attacked and continually get attacked and another one they are not attacked so far that means they get to get attacked that is how the thing is like you know these and police are it's like a virus and antivirus uh, you know this is another challenge you know one has to really look and uh, also you know what is the correct blockchain you know for my industry whether i should go to a private or I should go to federated you know these are all something you know which need to be deliberated in detail before you choose Another challenge is we have to see, you know, there are some territorial challenges, and only few companies know to face this. If you really go today, you want to do business. There are many, many compliance and regulations. You know, if I have to do business in Europe, I need to go to the GDPR. If I go to US, I have a different uh, compliance. Korea, different compliance. You know, India, if you come to, there is different compliance. So there are many compliance. Apart from the the regulations and compliance, you know. uh what i call you know enforced by the platform that is another one still you know we have to see you know lot of skill the developers in the market and there is no interoperability if you really see you know the interoperability only only you know is really really required whether you know you will get into this platform and not talk to this platform or this particular app will not talk to this app now all the people getting into lot of challenges again network integration especially with you know how i am going to implement the legacy application assume that some of them they have the backbone system specifically in the assume that you know they have some old you know mind mind frame or you know client server technology or xy the technology how this is going to be connected and integrated that's a huge cost you know or we don't know exactly what to be done that is another thing and also network related challenges another biggest thing you see is the culture itself that plays a huge role this is another thing which really have to see what kind of an organic system and also you know you may have to talk to different people different company you know so many things you know which we really have to see this these are all the challenges of course you really want to do an implementation is very good this is you know i will always say if you want to win anything you need to have 5d this is any way to quote i taken from shivkara apart from this you, know, you need to have a strong team you need to have every collaboration you need to have you know the strong project management you need to have 5d what are all those 5d desire dedication determination discipline and direction unless you have all this five wherever some required you need to have dedication also otherwise you cannot win the project because people will like progress but they hate change that's something you really need to know yeah and uh, let me go to that 
Now this is we talk to so much about technology, blockchain, all that kind of thing. Tell me, Ram, you know what I have to do, what I need to do. You know, I really want to even get into also the latest, you know, technology trend. I want to be a blockchain expert, or I want to be a technology expert, or I want to implement in my company, or I am a manager. I don't know how to handle it. You know, they decide someone talks. You know, a lot of us words. You know, it's really going crazy. I will say today, you know, we are going to see a quick recap and stop on your skills. Let's just address that because it's something you should have a value. You should really see what you need to do. If you really look at the people's skills, if you really see, you know, somewhere in uh, early, you know, 2010, you need to have accounts, budget maintenance, negotiation, people management. I am reporting, letter writing, English, my memory. If I just ask some, you know, source guy. Oh, oh! This is a search. Search. This is this. You know, all the item. He knows where, where, which he can keep it. And if you go to purchase guy, he tells which phone number. If you go to finance gentleman, he knows what is the bank balance, right? Away. Great, wonderful. That is what the case still we have here. But today the skills are different. He need to have an understanding about the technology. He need to understanding about the machine. He need to understanding about the robots. You need to understanding about all the jargon. What is a what is a man? That is the the concept of our level R. How much is going to be applicable to this? That's something you need to have today. Somewhere you need to know how to operate. At least some troubleshooting you really need to know how to see how I have to handle it. And also monitor and act. And I think all in a way very well. So no more you know you become a dump machine. You need to have an analysis innovation. Cognitive flexibility. That means emotionally, you should see how you can handle. This sort of I am not expecting. This is not expected by the industry. They are talking from 2020. The people should have all. This. Now you go. You know the guy who is delivering. Simply he is just picking a food and delivering to you. You should know how to operate. You should know what is GPS, what is the map, and of course, please you know these kind of things are normally expected. So that is the people skill you need to have, and also. Complex problem solving, simple problem solving is gone. Now you need to have complex problem solving, creativity, emotional intelligence, emotional quotient. Lot of things we started talking. So please understand when you really want to, you know, somewhere you work as a technological guy or technical guy, or when you want to work in a managerial position. Today the company, tomorrow they come and say, you know, we are going to have a technological implementation rollout, IoT based, blockchain based. We need really to understand. That is a critical. Let me give you one more live example. You will understand. You know, to move up a ladder, you really need to have. Now, I've seen that you know some of you already working. Maybe some of you experienced. Some of you were trained. We just go and ask. You know, as a sales manager or accounts or even the uh, what do you call? You just go to you know some of the functional level. You know, purchase or you know, supply chain guy. You say, sir. The people are reporting. How many people are reporting to you? This is around almost hundred and twenty people across the globe. They are in America party, and you know Europe twenty five people. In India, you know I have a complete back office. You know, eight hundred people or eighty people. Okay. Sir, Now, excuse me, sir. Is the scenario true? Excuse no. me, sir. Can we take up questions? Yeah. Ah, uh, sorry. Can we take up questions, sir? Sure, sure. I'll just complete it. Just a minute. I'll just take because I know the time is also nearing. I'll just close this. But that is not the case no more. If you really look now, you go go on today as a financial head, you will say I have twenty people. Sorry, instead of you know hundred people, you say I have twenty people. There are hundred bots working for me. No <coughs> bots working for me. I am using multiple platform of blockchain. That is what is happening. That is what is changing today, right? Now let's quickly uh, you know uh, the. Key features. I'm just doing a quick recap. Why are all of them doing it? Right. He is all going for time for change, cost reduction, cycle time reduction, transparency, predictability, and profitability. This is only everything is changing. Now I am done. Now you can ask questions. And please recall my thing. I know the answer. You know the answer. Otherwise, we'll find an answer. Or no answer also is an answer at this point of time. And some of you know the answers. Please, you know, you can take the question. 
because everyone is learning together yeah let me let me read out the questions uh, is blockchain technology will enhance the ip rights and development msmes definitely it will because you are going to see in next uh, in my opinion no around between 20 25 to 2030 you will see Uh, mostly the you know all the general companies sme everything they are going to use the technology because now you see the huge amount of platforms and all getting ready once the platform ready what they have to do they have to give the service for a fee as uh, something definitely you know this is going to be you are all going to use it yeah another question i answered the, i understood the question i answered rightly there is another question yeah any, any certificate course on blockchain for undergraduate students undergraduate course see there are you know a lot of institute is offering this and uh, only thing we have to figure out there is a lot of institute you know you know the blockchain and if we go to uh, course there are and there are various you know the forums and the organizations also giving you uh, for a fee so you have plenty my answer is you have plenty okay uh, why companies are hesitant hesitant uh, to implement blockchain technology is it uh, because of cost sorry come again why companies are assist, hesitant to implement blockchain technology is it because of cost no actually no See, you really see once they, you know, like I was listing out some of the challenges uh, because you really need, uh, you know, the uh, group of people or group of company to be part. It is not only one company, you know, go and only implement blockchain. It is like, you know, uh, if I have to, I, I transfer the money through, let's say, Paytm or phone pay or something. You also should have that. Otherwise, I need to have something like an UPI, universal UPI. right the blockchain one is you know like we discussed about you know three slides the challenges one is an understanding second you need to have you know the more service provider which yet to come in india much and also then an industry level also i was telling you you know the kind of an understanding because mostly initially we really see any any kind of a technology was the three to five years is given by uh, you know the what you call perception driven thing but actually Uh, it is only that there is no hesitation from the company they are just looking a simple uh, seamless platform to get you know plug in and do things if they go individually the cost will be huge yes sir uh, just to quickly connect the pc earlier if i have to go for an you know the uh, for an erp or something i have to buy a perpetual license now i can take i can do even the payroll and all i need to have my own system nowadays you see based on number of employees number of month you subscription you do do the payroll or etc right the, like that you know it should come for blockchain too hey yes, sir one last question sir yeah. you said iot is a blockchain application but in previous session we study that blockchain and iot go hand in hand i am so confused now wonderful your confusion is the first step for clarification uh, get convinced what i will say iot is a different technology blockchain is a different technology we have to understand the basically the difference between these two iot it is nothing but a physical sensor which is capable to receive the read the data i will not say receive the data read the data and transmit to the uh, targeted device or you know distinct device the example if i used you know uh, you can take in you know, a boiler or even take you know the kind of an ac or something based on that you know, say constantly the ac tell me what is the temperature is constantly running on, or based on that you know whether how much you suggest that just send it to me you will see a lot of apps also nowadays there or even the car meter whatever you can take whereas the blockchain is something if you really look you know uh it is first of all you want to know which is the particular 
a sensor is the unique one or is there any duplicate sensor like this you know somebody embedded or something you know if you really see you know can i just manage the cluster of let's say assume the region in your sensor is the block now can i just make a change so that you know i'll be able to see that you know this is immutable unaltered and i can see the data in a secured way these are all something you know it goes you know very hand in hand in terms of implementation but however these two technologies are do different in nature this is has a different purpose that has a different purpose yes sir uh, thank you so much sir uh, ramnathan sir uh, on i think first of all i need to apologize and sorry for the trouble in between you all have to go through i think you know this is something i didn't expect because otherwise <laughs> it should go seamlessly and then uh, thanks for your um, uh, uh, i uh, thanks for your patience and sincerely apologies thank you yes sir uh, thank you so much sir for your uh, session uh, is uh, very useful and informative and uh, you could cover a lot of applications of uh, uh, blockchain technology uh, in your uh, talk uh, on behalf of the participants and my own behalf uh, i thank uh, once again for your time efforts uh, and to make this session happen in this way thank you sir thank you so much thank thanks a lot to everyone sure so the uh, participants uh, now uh, we are going to break for lunch lunch break and we are going to join uh, once again at 2:30 2:30 pm uh, dr nikhil marivala uh, is going to talk on blockchain technology in education sector so kindly join at 2:30 now it is break for lunch see you all again at 2:30